<laughs> Welcome to the cult classic horror show. Every week, you can have the conversations you've always wanted to have about the films you love. Shut up! Get rid of your distractions and prepare yourself you got a big surprise coming to you. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome everybody to the cult classic horror show. Danny Bonin here with you guys. And Scotty Bonin here with you guys. We are the Blood Brothers and... The Rob. And... Carmelo Chimera. And we have a special guest, Mr. Woo. Thad Timothy on the line. Thad, how's it going? Hey. Doing I just, all right, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so good to yeah, have you, man. So good to have you. Thad is joining us for two reasons. Um, one, he was <laughs> he was generous enough, generous enough to pledge at uh, the appropriate level in our Kickstarter campaign for She Walks the Woods, and so is due a guest spot on our podcast. Uh, and then secondly is because he owns the Blu-ray of pieces that I ordered. They got damaged in the mail and then returned to shipper, uh, so I was not able to gather any... <laughs> Awesome information off that, and uh, Thad has it and has awesome information, so here we are. <laughs> and and three, he's joining us, too, because he's just a sexy son of a bitch. Yeah. That's right. Ooh, oh, my God, yeah, he's so yeah, handsome. Look at those <laughs> I feel like le- we're, he's wearing that awesome, oh, awesome whole classic horror elite shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby, show it. There's yeah, we shirt everywhere, man. Yeah. We were supposed oh, to yeah. record a video, but with five of us on Skype, my computer was having a freak out. So, uh, sorry, guys, you can't see. This is too much awesome to handle. It is. <laughs> That's but, right. Yeah. Anyways, you don't have to look at there's a you don't have to look at Rob's ugly face at least. <laughs> Although I still do because no, we have video. <laughs> We're still staring at each other deeply. He's when when he was at my house. I do want everyone to know that Thad does have the menu screen of pieces playing in the background, and it was all for naught. Perfectly good chainsaw all action going on right there. Yes. Oh yeah. Well, shit. Let's get I was into put it. The happy boots on later. Yeah. Already. Well, fuck. All right, let's uh, let's do some first impression roundage here. We're talking about pieces today. If you guys didn't catch that, pieces. Yes. So, uh, pieces. Carmelo, Carmelo, first impressions. My first thoughts are, you know, I'm starting to like these kind of Italian. What do they call them? Giallo films, or I don't know how to pronounce that shit. Um, that's like you're kind Italian. of whodunits. <laughs> yeah, you're Italian. What are you thinking? Your grandma yeah, I'm would be Italian, ashamed. But you know what? I don't know every esoteric film jargon in the in the book. I, <laughs> Can barely keep my own my own name straight anymore. I uh, I like these whodunits. I like the the you don't see the killer's faces and um, I I think they are. I, I do kind of like the the gore. It's starting to grow on me. It was a lot at first. Yes. Because uh, it is kind of cool thinking about how they do it and and it makes me very squeamish. It does the job. Um, but generally, I find p- movies like Pieces and the New York Ripper, they they just have a like a cheapness about them that I can't, I think it, it might be the dubbing to be honest with you, but there, there's just stuff that, that feels a little cheap to me. And, and even one like this that I really like, I still think is like a C plus or maybe, a, maybe a B minus at its best. All right. All right. Sure. Uh, cool. uh, Thad, what's opening thoughts on pieces? I, I love pieces, honestly, for, for that very reason right there. Uh, <clears throat> First thing I wanted to hear was Carmelo's reaction to it, though, because it is a it's a pretty hardcore film to watch, man. I, I think that was the first of its kind that I ever saw. It was like the one video at the video store that I wasn't sure I wanted to watch. And uh, when I finally did, I, I was hooked. I mean, it was, of course, I was quite a bit younger, you know, and there's a lot of a lot of boobs in there and a lot, oh, of, yeah. a lot of blood oh, yeah. and hardcore, yeah. just stuff I've never seen before in that Hell film. Yeah. <laughs> I like it just because it's so hasn't out seen. there. Yeah. Oh, you haven't seen. 
<laughs> sees it on his face every day. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, sorry to um so you, so thumbs up from Thad. Obviously, he has it playing in the background. Uh Rob pieces. Um it was it was it was better than than the duck movie that we watched. <laughs> um I mean, I I yeah. don't know. I don't I uh I think what really throws me off with it is the dubbing of English actors or actors that speak English. Cause I'm like, Oh, it's dub, but I'm watching, I'm watching him talk. I'm like, no, he, 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 he said sidewalk. I saw him say sidewalk, but why does it, why, why, why is it dubbed? The and director touched the, on that. He said they weren't allowed to his country forbid anyone to, uh, to film in a different language. Ooh. Other huh. than Spanish, and this is Spain. This is Spain. Yeah, it was filmed in uh, Madrid, and you know he was like, "This movie is." I could have sworn it made was a case Boston. About it. I could have sworn it was Boston. Boston. Yeah. No, it was all it was all shot in Madrid, but he said, "You know, this is a movie with with English actors, and and we're shooting it. You know, it's supposed to take place in Boston, but uh, I guess the minister had some sort of legislative control on uh, the filming and prohibited filming in any." Any other language that was nice. foreign to their country. So, 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 this is more of a Spanish American film, not like not not Italian American, right? All right, it feels that way, but yeah, it feels it, Italian, it's but it's Spanish. From Madrid, yeah. it's just because of where they filmed, right? I mean, the director is not Spanish or anything. It's Italian. It's an Italian horror film. Well, but, no, the, uh, no, the, he is Spanish, the Spanish, but it's in yeah. like the oh, Italian style. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, got He's it. From Spain, yeah. yeah. I'm on board with it now. Look how much I know about horror, everybody. <laughs> Look at this. Yes. This um, is a learning show. This show is you going along on our journey program. with us to <laughs> to uh, learn about horror. So there you have it. Uh, Scotty? Uh, yeah, it was very um, – I liked it more than uh, New York Ripper too. It definitely – had more of a, um, I guess, slasher feel to me, which I like the, you know, American sa uh, slasher feel. Uh, and um, obviously, yeah, there's things that stick out, like the like the dubbing and um, some of the uh, slow uh, special effects that could have been sped up maybe a, a little bit. But obviously, you know, in 1982, you, you got to do with what you can work with. Uh, but for being an older film and for... Um, for you know, for the small budget they had, I th I thought it I thought they did a great job, and it was definitely it went to that place that a, a lot of movies didn't back then, and even 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 now. So um, I get I give it a lot of respect, and I I liked it. Yeah, it was uh, I enjoyed it. It's got a lot of camp. It's got a lot of <laughs> practical effects that they did what they could at the time and and today if this yeah. movie were made it would obviously be a very different movie and it probably wouldn't be so loved by us slasher fans uh i'm gonna say that carmelo's a baby going mm, I can't, it's too gory for me i was squeamish <laughs> i'm too squeamish just wait till we're filming our next horror movie and the effects and i'm just like more blood I want more fucking blood. <laughs> yes, it's gonna, too. Where did this fucking guy come? All from? I can I'm picture it all now. All I can picture, it. all I can picture is him sitting at like the dinner table with with his girlfriend when they started dating. Sorry, wife when they started dating. Going not finishing, <laughs> not finishing his food. Going, I ordered too much food. I can't finish yet. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to have my balls now. <laughs> you know why I don't like gorgeous movies? Because when I see people getting their getting dismembered, to me it's just business. I don't want to think about work when I'm watching uh, work. Oh, shit. <laughs> I see, I see. I'm into murders and execution. I'm sorry, mergers and acquisitions. Acquisition, and I, yeah, you know, right. I deal with that every day. I will say that there Carmelo probably will never not finish a plate of food because uh, I got to eat with him on several occasions while he was here in town. So, uh, Just think right. of it as extra red sauce, man. That's all you got to do. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's extra marinara. I there like it, it is. All right. And uh, if it helps to know that like the majority of the blood in this movie was real animal yeah. blood from a slaughterhouse. And oh, that's real, pretty cool. Real animals during the flesh-cutting scenes. So, oh, Yeah, I did read that. That's it, that, it, It's pretty hardcore. That had that's to be smelly. So real. That had to God be smelly yeah, on set. It um, kind of makes me want to like – do that for our own movies yeah. because no. you don't get any more real than that. And uh, I, I, and that's one reason I think this movie stands out is the effects are 
great because yeah. it doesn't get any more real than using a chainsaw to cut up a pig carcass, you know? I mean, right. yeah. the parts that aren't super real, you could argue, is when he swings the chainsaw and then it cuts to a head falling off of a dummy and then, you know, back to it. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I was saying, some of, some of those parts. But, but it's so nitty-gritty and raw, it, it still has a good feel to it, even though, you know, just because they, they fucking did it, even though it's a dummy's head. Yeah. All right, well, yeah. let's let's get Carmelo's overview here for those of you who need a refresher on what happens in pieces. Yeah, for those of you who haven't had the chance to rewatch this beloved family classic recently, because it's just <laughs> one of those movies you see every year. Um, pieces opens on a, a small child. He's building a... Uh, a puzzle of a naked woman when his mom comes in and she goes off on this rant, some classic Burt Young parenting, slaps him around, and he chops her up with an axe and, uh, you know, kind of fakes to the police that he's like this scared little victim and they buy it. And the movie jumps 40 years later and the the killer who we have now no idea who the killer is as an adult is still completing this puzzle. He even has his his mother's old dress and he goes on a killing spree on the uh, camp- campus of a Boston University. He uh, he's pursued by uh, a police detective and lieutenant team who are working with the, the dean of the school to try to catch him. They even insert a, an officer undercover. For, former tennis star turned police uh, assistant, I guess, insert her behind the scenes. And they even team up with a boy who, by all rights, should have been one of their prime suspects, uh, Kendall. But he has the makings of a great police officer. In any case, um, may- mayhem ensues. This movie's ah. super fast-paced. There were, I think, four kills in the first 40 minutes. There's like a kill every 10 minutes. And uh, uh, there isn't much of a, of a plot beyond that other than everyone's always one step behind the killer as he's dismembering girls with a chainsaw and trying to piece together a, a body much like his own jigsaw puzzle, but out of real pieces. In the end, we learn that, uh, that the Dean was the little boy from the beginning and, and is in fact the killer, despite all the many red herrings in the movie, the police arrive in time to save their undercover agent. Um, and then we have one of my favorite features of cheap movies, there's a double scare ending. We get the the last scare where the corpse <laughs> of sewn together pieces falls out and everyone screams. And I was like, what a great place to end the movie. And then the movie keeps nope. going and <laughs> the corpse gets up and it grabs <clears throat> Kendall by the Johnson and it squeezes like a bunch of grapes. And then, <laughs> then the movie. so good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that it got up. I don't know if it Looks quote unquote got great. up. Well, I mean, it had its hand. It <clears throat> yeah. up and it. Smashed it. It did. I didn't know if that was a corpse or if that or if that was the dean or if that yeah. The, the popping, yeah, I mean, was, the popping noise was amazing. <laughs> I know, right? Tell me uh, you didn't cross your legs when you heard that noise. That you? was awesome. I didn't. I no. Sorry. <laughs> well, when they say that, you know, a lot of the cannibal movies where they started featuring castrations and things like that, and all this brutal imagery came after pieces. As they started, you know, so it's kind oh. of credited by some. As starting that corner, kind of horrific side of of horror, that extreme sure. that wasn't around back then. The whole, yeah. the the uh, subgenre of nut grabbing and <laughs> yeah. pulverizing. Yeah. There was a lot well, of different ways to you know of of gore displayed here. Yeah. Thank, thank God for Juan Simone who made nut grabbing and crushing <laughs> commonplace in cinema. Yes. yes. Uh, Cheers. How about some Rob's rundown? Rob's rundown. Rob's rundown. <laughs> <laughs> Been waiting to see this live. Oh, so well. Okay, we have uh, pieces. 1983. We have dubbing, death by chainsaw, nude puzzles. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, Madrid posing as Boston. We have death by axe. We have nine-year-old puzzle pervert dismembers mom's corpse. We have uh, more dubbing. We have killer dressed like uh, the one of my favorite comic book movies, the the Shadow with Alec Baldwin. Um, we have uh, Death by Mirror. We have uh, bad skateboarding. We have a creepy gardener. We have a university cover up. <clears throat> we have lines like, "The most beautiful thing in the world is smoking pot and fucking on a waterbed." <laughs> we have topless bikini pool skimmer attack. We have 30 seconds of dialogue that feels like 30 minutes. We have jazzercise. We have even more dubbing. 
And we have the most exciting tennis game ever filmed, Sleepwalking Kung Fu Professor's <laughs> Puzzle Zombie Castration. Uh, Ty and Draco's Weapons of the Movie Brilliant. from is a uh, McCulloch chainsaw and a Smith and Wesson model 27, 357 Magnum. And because I kind of rip off Joe Bob Briggs by doing my rundown, I looked up his rundown and his rundown is uh, eight dead bodies, nine breasts, 11. If you count dead breasts, but we don't count dead breasts. We have no motor vehicle chases. We have one beast chainsaw foo, waterbed foo, four gallons of blood, heads roll, arms roll, legs roll and feet roll. Oh, oh nice. <clears throat> All right. All right. He doesn't get quite get as detailed as the Rob does. That yeah. is awesome. Kind of outshined him. He just gets right to the right to the nitty gritty of it. Um, I don't. Were there numbers available on this one? Uh, I, it yeah, said there, successful. There was limited yeah. numbers, but I but I did find some. Um, so numbers were uh, the budget was estimated to be three hundred thousand. Um, opening weekend U.S. they did six hundred and four thousand. Um, it opened in nineteen eighty three. And um, gross worldwide, uh, it was mainly just U.S. was two point uh, was two million. So, um, so yeah, I mean, right. it made not bad. It's money back, but still, it huh. was a, it was a, it was a success for being 1983. So it was they they came and they wanted a sequel, and the director said that he was tied into another project at the time, and by the time he became available to do it, by that point. Everybody had kind of moved on, and there were there were other things going on. But at first, they wanted a sequel because it made so much money right out of the gate. Yeah, that's Crazy. kind of a you know bummer, what's, man. What's cool? I know. Yeah, they, uh, they even filed a copyright claim for a sequel. Like they, someone yeah. got that going. So it, there's it a was treatment. Really, yeah. Yeah, there's something. There's stuff out there. They said you can find online when you look it up. That's available. But, and on that interview I watched recently with with uh, uh, J P Simone, he he was still hoping that that would come through. But he passed away in 2011. So oh. I, I think this interview was probably probably around 2010 when this interview came out. So oh, wow. sometimes it yeah, baffles. It sometimes baffles me because like he said that uh, I remember. I believe it was when we were covering the mutilator that uh, the the producer director was like uh seemed down for for a remake or a sequel and uh, maybe it wasn't mutilator it could have been chopping them all like whatever it was one of those that we were listening to and i'm just surprised that this much later with all the the popularity of like a i don't know how popular it is but obscure slasher films or horror I, you would think that the filmmaker of these original movies could sort of not super easily but get a remake done if they really wanted to you know i would think right. so I just, yeah. Think so too. yeah, with yeah. all the indie horror and everything, it seems like if if that filmmaker just contacted uh, another uh, indie horror producer or filmmaker that they could make something happen, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. but, it, does it does it does it depend on who has like does the does, it, does the production company own the rights to this or who owns the rights? I mean, I don't I don't know. I mean, like, I'm someone, sure it does depend on that somewhat. Yeah, but someone else. They has asked to the make director money. in the interview, and he wasn't sure. You know, because one of the producers who was his friend and brought him the project um, had passed away, and one of the other guys had retired, and he said, you know, he, he kept hearing of pieces being shown in all these different countries and different places. He said it has something like 15 different titles, and he said, I, I don't know about any of that. Like I don't get uh, any information on it. He yeah. said, I w he wouldn't really know where to go to maybe kind of a Texas chainsaw massacre situation where they don't really know what happened to the rights or yeah. Yeah. They went off with them. Um, he did make money from it. He, he indicated and, sure. and was doing fine from its legacy. But as far as knowing who controlled it, he didn't seem to have any clue he's in like, the interview. He's like Carpenter. He just gets the check in the mail. And that's yeah. all he cares yeah. about. Is, are, you send, are you going to send a check? <laughs> I mean, I will, I will say, I mean, I'm not in love. I'm starting to, to like these uh, Gallo films a little bit more. But, I mean, this one definitely deserved a sequel a lot more than The Howling did. Or oh, Puppet yeah. Master, or The <laughs> Exorcist, or um, Scream. Well, let's be I clear: mean... The Exorcist deserved a sequel. It just it's not a horrible a one. Sequel. Yeah, it deserved yeah. part three. Yeah, it deserved part three. There you go. And yeah. hey, it deserved the beginning. Rennie Harlan in the house. Sharks oh, yeah. everywhere. Have shark Even though there are no sharks. Gotta have more I sharks. Know. Oh, Thadden remembers the sharks. <laughs> that, <laughs> man. Uh, we did not deserve Exorcist oh, Dominion, sorry. though. That one was, I oh, didn't yeah. like that one. That no. guy was not creepy at all. No. 
No. Um, Let me ask you this. And, uh, uh, um, chainsaw. Uh, and this had like a slogan on one of the covers that I have seen, and it said, you don't have to go to Texas for a chainsaw massacre. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Too. Nice. The director was really worried about, he didn't want to do a chainsaw bit because he, he said that's been done, and it's been done perfectly. Yeah. Why would we want to try? So he was kind of apprehensive about the chainsaw becoming the big, you know, that's what's on the front of the box. That's what's in yeah. the slogan. He, you know, it ended up being one of the best gags in the film. Um, but at first yeah. he was, he was kind of not on board for that very reason. I think that's yeah, why. I sure. Mm-hmm. I think to this movie's credit though. And I, I like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, by the way, it's one of my favorite horror movies. Yeah. And you don't really see anybody to my recollection. <clears throat> You never see anybody dismembered right. by a chance. Certainly not like this movie. Right. And so I think that is good because in your mind, your memory, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is this horrendously gory thing. But this is the first time I've ever seen anybody on, in a movie chopped up by a chainsaw. So. Well, that's what he wanted to do, especially with the pig. He said, you know, when we when we got into the, the reel of it and we're able to use that pig and show it cutting through, then he felt more comfortable. Okay, now it's something you haven't seen. You haven't seen yeah. it penetrate. Yeah, and, and yeah so. That was that really was cool. Mm-hmm. I was waiting for the camera to, to uh, pull away, but I'm like, no, it's not pulling away. <laughs> no. No, it's, it's not pulling away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They kept going. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if you have uh, uh, certain things you want to start with that, but otherwise we could start talking about like just uh, observation notes from beginning to end, and you could pop in with with whatever uh, stuff you have. I don't know how you guys want to do oh, that. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, as far as as just the film goes, we open up, and uh, it's it the first kill that he. Uh, axes her in the head, right? That's yeah. his mom, yeah. Yes. Axes his the mom. mom in the head. Well, <laughs> so I, to me, it looked like he just was tapping it, like the axe was bouncing off her head until finally it sunk, you know? <laughs> it was just one of those that maybe didn't quite work out that well until we finally got the payoff of the sinkage in the brain. Yep. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I remember looking at it thinking like, oh, I guess this looks okay. And then it does, it gets in there and I'm yeah. like, oh, that's. That's pretty. Co- How did they do that? That's pretty cool. No, the first it's three. It's a pretty strong little like, kid. Blood too. right away. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was. No, the first few taps were like she, she, he was hitting her with a blunt force object, you know, and then even <laughs> though it was the tip of an axe. Well, I think Thad's right. I think he was a tough little kid because mom Bert younged him around so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did anybody notice when she tries to break that mirror? She's bitching about her husband, and she slams into this mirror like six times. Nothing. <laughs> That is the yeah. strongest mirror ever made. <laughs> I thought it showed her breaking it. Was our, our the vanity mirror? Showed it crack a little bit. Uh, Breathed on that mirror. Like the, I could have shattered it. But then it's like a slow motion yeah, slam. I thought it was the pr- same slam redone in slow mo. They were just really trying to milk that mirror crack because yeah. they actually cracked a real mirror. Yeah. That was pretty cool. I mean, there was tons of blood all over the room. The cops come in. Obviously, we see her head in one closet and then the son's in the other closet um, crying as if he didn't do anything. Uh, And I mean, there was just a lot of blood and it was it it was really cool. I mean, that's the opening of the film. You know, you think about that 1983 at a theater. Yeah. (laughs) And the the director was talking about how, you know, they, they. the 42nd Street would show all these underground and, 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 you know, exploitation films and everything. And one of these interviewers who wrote some liner notes in the Blu-ray said that this was the first time he walked into one of those theaters and the whole audience was just quiet. Like they didn't Jeez. know how to react, you know, because the very opening scene is this little boy who kills his mom with an axe and there's blood everywhere and her head's in the closet. And yeah. his, like, body was <laughs> just shocking. Like, oh, holy shit. We've never seen anything, even on 42nd street, quite like that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. The uh, cops run in there unarmed. These are the first cops I've seen with no guns. They're just like, even later in the film, they're like, are you ready? They stand by the door. Are you ready? And, or no, this isn't the beginning of the film. Are you ready? And, yeah. He's like, yeah, but how could he be ready? There's no gun or anything. He's just standing there, like, yeah, I'm ready. Open the door. Well, he probably doesn't think it. He probably thinks it's just like harmless or just like a little boy upstairs, not knowing he's an axe murderer. I'm just thinking. They weren't worried about that. That that, that, that nosy ass neighbors probably called him 20 times. I just think uh, maybe guns in the opening scene weren't in the budget. That's what I'm going to go with. So now we're we forgot that piece. Yeah, yeah. Now we're at we're at 40 years later in Boston. Yeah, and uh, which is which is a massive jump, you know. Most movies, it's <laughs> ten years later or twenty. It's like fifty years later. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
It is a this bit of a jump. Dean has been, this Dean has been jerking off to puzzles for 40 years, yeah. and he's had enough. And finally, he starts Yeah, to he's kill. just finally... I wonder what made him snap. We don't really know what finally made him snap. You know, that, that could have been... Uh, a point that we could have learned also by jumping 40 years or by saying 40 years, you could have just said, I don't know how you could have put it. Maybe, um, yeah, uh, not too far in the future. I don't know. Anyways, it takes out, uh, what is that? Kendall from being able to be the killer, you know? Yeah. It takes out yeah. someone younger than, you know, 40. So to be taken out. So there I'm you wondering get, if they yeah. did that because, just to create that, you know, who done it type of thing, because guessing it was the professor and he was so much older. Oh God. Yeah. I, I don't know if it was originally written that way. Maybe he wanted this actor and the guy was older. I, I don't know, but it is weird. Cause like, like you said, 40 years later, that's quite a leap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do. I do love the detective in this. He always has a cigar <laughs> that's never lit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and I, and I do, and I do love the very lax, police procedures in this like oh there's a crime scene this woman's been been murdered oh professor you're here would you would you come look at this body could you tell me if the chainsaw did this and go oh, kindle you'd make a great you make a great police officer here here's access to all the files all the suspects yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, and to top it and to top it off my heart and to top it off here's some wendy's <laughs> oh, I did love the old throat. Wendy's in Madrid. What was that all about? <laughs> you know, and you know that was the good Wendy's when they had the when they had the greenhouse. You know, like the glass wall and oh, the yeah, tables that, that had like yeah. laminated newspaper on it. That was the good Wendy's. My my dad told me that like back in the day, Wendy's was like. The, today's five guys like today like they had oh, the, yeah. the biggest fucking juiciest burgers you'd ever seen before that was my first job was at wendy's oh really oh, oh, shit. High school. Right. yeah yeah and it was man it, it was a big deal did I you get, get free food terrible oh yeah <laughs> i gotta tell we you supposed to but we did yeah but i you, gotta you did anyways you i gotta worried. tell you overall i do think wendy's is my absolute favorite fast food burger place I think so too. Oh no, it's Hardee's. No, 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 no. Wendy's. I like Wendy's. Hardee's. They still have Hardee's. Some southern country shit like that. <laughs> <It's Hardee's. laughs> Carl Jr. up here. Yes. I got Carl Jr. Yeah. up here. It's the same yes, thing. We have Carl's Jack in the Box. box. <coughs> oh, I, mean, I try. I've had Jack in the we Box. We have Jack in the Box too, man. They, no, they're trying to do too much. Good. They're doing tacos and look. Everyone, yeah. everyone's always arguing about Whataburger and uh, In and no, Out. Whataburger's not that good. And Five Guys <laughs> and all that. And everyone's always arguing about what's better and Blake's Lotta Burger, all this shit. And it's like, I just go back. They're nationwide. I just love Wendy's the most. Wendy's is my favorite. Wait, where else yeah. can you get a triple? You know, with bacon. I remember people used to come yeah. through and order that triple combo with a diet coke. Oh, yeah. and it's like, okay, there you go. Yeah, and this thing Midwest, is a beast. Like Culver's. Culver's. Um, we have Culver's too. Oh yeah, yeah. we have Culver's, Culver's. here. Culver's. I like In and Out Burger, but it's really not as good as Culver's. And and frankly, none of these are that great of burgers. Like <laughs> none of these are like you know you have like a real burger. That's a, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. None of yeah. Really All right. Well, that's enough about fast food. Let's. Uh... Yeah. Can we talk about this skateboarding scene? What the fuck happened? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> No, I mean oh, th 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 a this is a scene. trend because in um in in the, the 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 duck killer of New York or whatever we had the girl riding the bicycle and she slams into the VW or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, but you're right, Carmelo. Who I, was this girl? Did she die? What happened? Yeah, we oh, didn't she's see. Dead. We didn't even. Oh, what did it have to, to do dead. with anything else in the movie? We didn't even see I if think... the glass broke, right? No, I we think, just hear him scream. Just I think I think it's like I think it's some kind of like lost in translation thing between you know the Spanish and the U.S. Like, what would oh they skateboard in the U.S. everywhere? We can make that dangerous. Or like, well, the director said at the last minute they kind of they realized that the the cut of their film was a little too short, mm. and so they just added a couple of random scenes that didn't make a whole lot of sense, like the like, like the, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. I have a lot that about that. That made a lot of sense. Yeah. That, that, that I was really, definitely I really one of them that came it. in last. And, and so maybe, I don't know, maybe that was one of those scenes. Cause, and I hadn't really uh, thought about it too much until I watched it again last night. And I thought, oh my God. <laughs> the, same thing. The, what the hell I, I happened? Agree the with Kung that Fu because... Professor. The Kung Fu Professor is what woke me back up watching this movie. <laughs> I'm just sitting, whatever. And I just 
so I hear was, all this ruckus and I turn I'm like oh, oh my what? god this is amazing I don't, <laughs> I don't want to I actually, actually need to watch the well since Rob's already heard, this is my kung fu professor I was like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. gotta rewind this. He was really loud. That was awesome. Well, since Rob's already started, you might as well spill the beans. Yeah, well, that. Talk, he, tell us. He apparently one of the producers was also doing um, kung fu movies, and this guy was a Bruce Lee impersonator, and he was in these films. And he was just visiting the set one day, and they thought, man, this guy knows all sorts of martial arts, and he's in the producer's film. We need to we need to get a scene with him. And it was one of those scenes where they said, you know, we we need something to make it longer. Just throw him in there. And the director feels it made perfect sense, but a lot of the other people were saying that <laughs> came out of nowhere, and nobody really knows what was going on but it was more or less just to give that guy a cameo yeah he was a star in one of the producer's other films it's so so funny like he like jumps mary riggs for no reason (laughs) and then then um kendall comes in he's like oh hey hey professor oh i must have fallen down or like what (laughs) he doesn't remember any of it (laughs) no no he he said oh oh i must have had some bad chop sherry (laughs) oh god (laughs) i know he totally did the stereotype i couldn't believe it but it was so it it wasn't his name bruce lay bruce lay yeah yeah Yeah. bruce lee minus one e (laughs) yeah I, i saw that yeah it was very confusing um but yeah i you know what carmelo the glass that we were just talking about sort of snuck by me like it happened and yeah. uh, and I it just moved on to the next thing and I sort of instantly forgot about it but now that you mention it yeah like what the fuck happened yeah. so so yeah. the skateboarder girl I... the skateboarder girl isn't the same girl that's laying on on the lawn in the second scene right that's what I was going to say I thought that the first time I saw it and then watching it again recently I was like, no that's a completely different it is girl huh? and story and I... oh. <laughs> No! Oh, oh, my oh, oh, oh my god! Oh, good god! I'm gonna get that fixed! What is that noise? You hear that noise? It's like a chainsaw. Uh, sure. <laughs> All right, well, that means it's. Sound of a baby being dismembered. <laughs> yes. That I don't means. Hear it. Uh, <laughs> that means it's time for the horror halftime. Okay, guys, before we can announce the Horror Halftime winner, we have an announcement of our own. This Horror Halftime is brought to you by Studio House Designs. These guys are the best in the business. These guys eat, live, and breathe horror just like the rest of us do. These were the first to come out with the VHS box print shirt poster thing, and now it's exploded. They do everything. All your favorite movies, all your favorite directors, genres they have it they have t-shirts long sleeve shirts baseball tees crew necks hoodies tanks enamel pins flags patches phone stands stickers pillowcases sunglasses and a subscription service whoo along with screen printed posters now they know that you guys are awesome we know that you guys are awesome so we went out and we said hey what about our cult classic horror fans they said you know what we got you covered at checkout use c c h 15% 15% off store wide. One item, 20 items, 100 items. 15% off your entire cart, 15% off store wide. Use code CCH, all capitals at checkout. And I cannot forget to mention free stickers in every order. Doesn't matter. Everybody loves stickers. I love stickers. Free stickers, every order, 15% off. Use code CCH at checkout. You guys are going to love it. You're going to post pictures on Instagram. You're going to tag me. You're going to tag everybody. You're going to tag them. You're going to tag Cult Classic Horror. Spread the word. Use the discount. Get some awesome, awesome gear and enjoy the rest of your horror halftime. Again, studiohousedesigns.com. CCH at checkout. 15% off. Enjoy the horror halftime. Oh, the horror halftime. What's that, Danny? Oh, the horror halftime is. is uh, if yeah, I, yeah, I've been trying to be better about talking about it. horror halftime. If you guys are listening for the first time, is your chance to win some awesome free gear from us uh, every week. We will name the horror freak of the week. Yes, that is wearing one of our shirts right now, but you can't see that because we're not doing video. Um, Yes, the Horror Freak of the Week, where uh, enter to win by submitting a meme on social media that has to do with last week's episode. The best place to submit is in our Facebook group, The Cult Classic Horror Show, using the hashtag Horror Halftime. But really, you can post it on any social media outlet using the hashtag Horror Halftime and tagging us at Cult Classic Horror or at CC Horror on Twitter so that we see it. 
Uh, if we like your meme the best, we will. Uh, or if you're like brand new and no one else, everyone else is a has been, <laughs> then uh, you just may win. <laughs> so uh, that Danny is winning the hearts and minds of our fans. I know, I know. That's what it is. So, uh, but we do have a horror freak of the week, and the horror freak of the week this week is. <laughs> Mark Hildebrandt. Mark Hildebrandt. Ooh, Mark okay. Hildebrandt. I, I do give a, a E for effort to um, uh, Patrick James Rufa for basically submitting like five of awesome memes. They were awesome. They were so good. They were pretty pretty badass. But uh, Mark, you win. I don't. I think uh, this is a first timer, and so we'd love to send you some gear. So message us on the Facebook page with your address and shirt size, and I will hook it up. Um, I think I, you know, I try to do some announcements at this time, but we, we, we are completing up the Patreon. Those of you who, uh, are patrons will notice, <laughs> we apologize. You've been getting a lot of emails lately as we've been uploading all of the episodes. Patreon is sort of stupid and will only let you add posts one at a time. So the only way to upload our old episodes, all 225 of them, is to just do them one at a time. And it will send you an email notification each time one of them is uploaded. Jeez. And uh, yep. there's just no way around it. I, the good news is you have access to our whole archive because we're only going to keep like 50 episodes at a time on iTunes and stuff. Yep. So you'll have a complete archive ad-free. You'll have uh, – and the episodes that we post on Patreon will be ad-free. Um, yes. The other thing you may have noticed is – the patrons chose this week's movie. We let you vote and the people spoke and voted for pieces. And, you know, that's like, that's really important for us because choosing which movies we cover is a really important part of the podcast and letting you choose those movies is, is it shows it's us showing you how much we want you to be a part of this with us. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, another thing that, uh, we have too, we don't have one today. I, I thought we would, but we don't yet. Um, if you are a patron at the appropriate level, you can leave us a voicemail about your thoughts on the episode, uh, of what we're covering, the movie that we're covering, and we will play it on the air if we approve it. Um, and next week's movie, I, uh, Danny, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, next week we're going to do Terminator. Yeah. And we're going to do it as a crossover episode with the Call Classic Action Show, which is the bonus podcast that we give to our patrons. So um, if you watch Terminator and you have thoughts, leave us a voicemail and, and you could be on the episode. If you're the, uh, Keep an eye on Patreon to see what level you have to be at. Uh, and then if you like Terminator and you like Call Classic Action, uh, be a patron and we're going to cover the rest of the Terminator movies on Call Classic Action. Yeah, so that's uh, it's not it's sort of horror, but that's why we're calling it a crossover. We've done this once before, where we did a cold classic action episode as a cold classic horror uh, release, just to sort of promote the bonus podcast. So keep an eye on that for next week. Um, if you're wondering where to leave the voicemail, if you are a patron at the correct level, you will get a notification. I'll post. I've already posted it twice in Patreon, and I'll post it uh, weekly for all, all new patrons. So you guys will be able to see that. And uh, one last thing is we do want you to keep voting on the podcast and, and we didn't all work out exactly how this is going to go, but we, we need a little more time, I think, between the vote and, and the episode so we can get the Blu-rays and watch the commentaries and such. So we'll have the poll for the next episode. It'll go out uh, on Patreon. It'll be in Danny's email tomorrow, uh, but it won't be obviously it won't be next Wednesday's episode. That's Terminator. You'll be voting on the following week's episode. Yeah. So the yes. poll will always be like like a week and a half ahead of time. Um, and we'll announce the poll winner, you know, for the following week in the next episode. Yes. Awesome. All right. I hope that wasn't too confusing. Um, <clears throat> cool. That concludes the horror halftime. Yes. Yes. So, so I actually want to, want to touch on it. We see this 40 years later. And we see um, the murderer pulled a box out of a drawer. It's all dark. And I, that's when uh, Carmelo kind of touched on this. We see the dress with blood on it, the heels with blood on it, and then the puzzle, uh, of, of course. That blood was uh, pretty red red still for 40 years later, I, I must say. <laughs> yeah. I actually – my question on this was, is this like a thing about the film quality? Because all of these – 
like video nasties from the early 80s, they have this like bright, bright red that looks like paint. And it almost takes me out of it sometimes. And I just thought yeah. to myself, did they just do the cameras suck? Or are they like afraid it wouldn't show? And, and they yeah, and they, they had real blood, obviously, but I think obviously this was fake blood. And I was thinking that's that might be it. Maybe they're afraid that it didn't show and they wanted the audience to know, hey, look at mom's blood on. And this was her clothes that she was wearing. But obviously they do like a flashback with the dress. And, and we know that from that. So, yeah, it's hard to say. Um, they do come in right away. I've, they do the, the kill right away in the beginning, but then mm-hmm. I thought the next kill was just, I mean, it was right up to bat. You had the guy mid daylight on the lawn chopping her head <laughs> off with a chainsaw. I don't know how he got away with it, yeah. but, uh, that's pretty bold. You know, that was yeah. a bold move. Yes. <laughs> Very bold. <laughs> uh, this was the one where, yeah, you know, dummy head being lopped off. I don't even know if they had the same setting. But it was fine. You know, it was, they did what they could. Body shaking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 To the body. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it may be. I don't know if it's the next one or not. Well, before we get to the next kill, because I think the next one might be the, the pool one. Is that right? If I get him in the right order. I don't know. I believe. I believe. Um, so. I, I have a note here on the, that. The, the she... skimmer. The skimmer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've tried. I've, I've tried to, like, skim. Murder someone a... with a skimmer. Well, no, but I mean, I've, like, tried to skim, like, <laughs> pine straw out of the pool. It's damn near impossible. And and this guy basically just trapped her and killed her with a skimmer. I don't understand why she got knocked out by the skimmer. Was it like laced with poison? <laughs> well, I thought he was choked. I thought he like had it around her neck. Yeah, and but and was there's no way it would choke her that much to just. I mean, unless she's so sensitive like Carmelo and his. And Are his... you an expert on choking women, Dan? <laughs> uh, no, just people. Just people. It takes both hands. People in general. Yeah. Hey, I was. I, don't I, I, had a note on this. I, I choked a lot of women. I choked a lot of women when I uh, was a jujitsu practitioner for eight years. <laughs> Bruce Lee. Oh, you never had any bad. You never. You never came across any bad chop suey and slept walk <laughs> <laughs> and like basically mugged one. And she was so cool about it. Shannon was just like, oh, oh. Shannon, Shannon likes getting choked. Oh my! Okay, oh, is this Daddy here? <laughs> Secrets from the CCH. You can't Daddy see the video, but the Danny CCH knows he went too far. Well, oh we all we all know That's that you know she doesn't listen. <laughs> oh, she doesn't. Uh, we all know that Christine likes it rough as shit because we saw her manhandle Carmelo's Carmelo's face the other oh, day. Oh my God! No, no, no! I don't know if it was rough or if or if it was like it was like a power move, like. Like he went to Colorado, we all went to Colorado and like bromanced out. I mean, I swear to God, she looked right at me, looked right at me, <laughs> looked at and me. then basically jumped on Carmelo. <laughs> she, it was, it was, it was, it was alpha. It was she was yeah. marking her territory. Yeah. My wife What's is definitely Carmelo? an alpha. That's for sure. Anyways, what I'm just trying to say is that I don't think that any any um, arrangement of the pool skimmer could have choked her almost to passing out. She she she, she could have just dropped down the bottom and swam swam, swam yeah. out. Of- I do. Try that I, next I, I, I yeah. do appreciate yeah. the. Um, I do appreciate the. I'm in a bikini, but I'm still just gonna go topless. Like, I, 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 yeah. I hated to see her go. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of sex in this. this. I mean, there were I mean, more. Just that, like, note that she passes Kendall. I want to do it on an, on an underwater. See you at the pool. I don't understand so. how Kendall gets so much snatch. I mean, it doesn't does. seem like he's that. Yeah. My wife he, actually said that. Well, I mean, he's going to make a good cop. <laughs> I <don't know>. My <laughs> yeah, wife wrote, yeah. there's no way that guy got these women. <laughs> and then she made me cross it out of my notebook later. I think maybe she saw his appeal and changed her mind. Oh, oh. she saw his uh, his dangler. His, his piercing yeah, eyes. That's right. <laughs> my uh, lord. You know that they had scene, to that scene was uncomfortable. Calm that down. They had to what? No, they had to bring in ice because... They had him laying there on top of her for so long, what? and his body reacted. And so when he got up, that wasn't part of the script. They really? still made it. No, they said they had to bring in ice. Hard. <laughs> put it, yeah, rock yeah. hard, whatever. <laughs> so my wife is screaming from the next room because she wants me to clarify. The reason she said there's no way that guy got those women is because she was referring to the, his fat friend with the glasses. No offense, Rob. And 
<laughs> then she re- retracted her statement after she realized who the correct guy was. Um, uh, I know what she's up to. Okay, I okay. see. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I see how so, this goes. Okay. So the note I have is that they filmed this in the winter Disclaimer. time, and that girl almost froze to death, like filming that pool scene. The I, director I, said I, that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, but yeah. how? But Eight. how serious could that have been? I mean, was it like? Uh, I know I said it was five below, five below freezing, and uh, they actually had a longer sequence planned out for that, and they they couldn't do it. He said it was it was the worst part of the film because oh my god, they couldn't do it the way he wanted to, and he, and and the girl literally almost died from it. So wow, wasn't it indoors though? Hard. I mean, yeah, it, but it, I, I don't know if it was out on a. He, he didn't really describe have, it. They can't. They don't have heated pools in Spain. It's basically a third world country. And they probably uh, it was probably in a heated build in a building that didn't have heat. Yeah, it looked like kind of a almost like a greenhouse type of enclosure with a you know. Yeah. He said it was it was freezing. It was January and it was five below freezing and she got in that pool and that was about it. Wow. I just love that sexy saxophone when she starts taking <laughs> off her her, oh, her yeah. clothes. It's it's just the best. Yeah, just, Scotty had to go get some ice after that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I had to get some ice. I was just thinking yeah, maybe. I just th- was thinking maybe she was being a little oversensitive, like Carmelo and his aversion to gore. What is your deal? <laughs> I'll stop. I'll stop now. Fucking oh. Danny wants some. He wants a I'll, piece of me. I'll stop. I'll stop now. I'll stop. You actually kind of motivate me to write more. He's not <laughs> happy with my progress on our script. No, <laughs> I'm but, happy. <laughs> So actually, like like right before this, we you guys, you guys, we see uh, the school gardener uh, Willard, and he's definitely one of the uh, red the red herrings. I I thought maybe it was between him and Pres- uh, Professor Brown that I thought were the killers now, at first. I want to see an interview with this guy because I can't tell if he's uh, acting like that or if he's like autistic in real life and just has weird yeah, that eyes. Dude's like a like an Oscar recognized. I mean, he's. He's been a, he he played Bluto and Popeye and he, he I did knew a bunch he was of familiar films and they, everyone was surprised that him and uh, Christopher George the the lead guy were were in this movie. Yeah, uh, they Paul L. Smith. The quality of their acting really helps out. Yeah, movie. the yeah. the lead guy you could tell lead guy meaning <clears throat> the uh, the inspector right the the Lieutenant detective Bracken, Lieutenant yeah. Lieutenant Bracken, yeah, yeah he was definitely a cut above as far as acting goes I think for sure and his wife was. Uh, um, Linda or Mary, the blonde, that was his real wife. Oh, yeah, that's right. I yeah. saw that. Uh, Linda Day, uh, George. Yeah, they did, did a lot of movies together. Okay. Um, so, yeah, anyways, I have, I also have, so the guy, I can't believe he's getting that much snatch. I can't believe the, the thing <laughs> choked her out. Um, and then I think the next one we have is in the, or nearby is in the dance room where the guy's stalking him. And I swear to God, the bathroom is fle- three floors down and across the building in this. In this yeah. uh, dance studio, <laughs> I just yeah, it's a big building, yeah. and you I never actually about... see her go in a bathroom, so they could have just made it the next door over. I don't, I don't. Sorry, yeah, we keep cutting Carmelo off. Please, sir, please go. No, no, it's all right. I, I just, I actually wanted to say about the dance room. It's not the first time we're in the dance room; it's the second time. Uh, there is a, that shot is awesome where the victim is like she's nervous, she's trying to get ready and get out the door. She leaves out one door, closes the lights. But half the room is like a mirror. The shot doesn't cut mm-hmm. or change. And then from off screen, a door opens. You see his silhouette reflected in the mirror. It's just a, it was a really cool shot. And I really liked it. And I thought it was, it was probably my favorite shot in the movie mm-hmm. when the guy goes into the dance studio in the dark. I thought that was really cool. <clears throat> I actually, that tricked me. I, I sort of thought, I didn't know it was a reflection. But now that you say that, yeah. I, I, and I think that's what it's meant yeah, to. It looks like cool. he comes out of the darkness. Yeah. But it yeah. doesn't you know, doesn't change your cut. And I think that's they're trying to disorient you and think like, oh, we maybe we changed shots or something, but we mm-hmm. didn't. I like that. Um yeah, I, I I was jumping around. I think my next note is about the Bruce Lee look like, which we already talked about. So um, we, we we actually missed the the tennis match, uh, so we get we get the, yeah. the, the, the craziest like- Tennis match I've ever seen. Looked like a half ass. A, a tennis match that was shot in real time <laughs> is what it felt like. <laughs> Which means it's as exciting as tennis normally is. That was yeah, like yeah, beginner I, tennis. I don't know what was going on there. Uh, so apparently none of them knew how to play tennis. I, yeah, I guess they, were, they needed a professional tennis coach. Yeah, they were supposed to be. Yeah, they knew nothing about it. 
portraying wow. professional uh, tennis players and a tennis coach had to be hired so they could learn <laughs> to like lob the ball enough, you know, to be con- con- convincing enough. But obviously they were standing so close to the net. It looked like they were hitting the ball up and it would have yeah. went like way over the fence, but obviously it didn't. So yeah, it was definitely yep. uh, the tennis uh, person didn't, didn't do their job. Yeah. <laughs> It was uh, um, yeah left to be lacking. Go ahead. Yeah. It was do awesome. We, do we want a boomstick shotgun segment to get a few? Yeah, more yeah. Fact- let's bust there? some factoids out. I don't know. Do you do you have some Carmelo or Thad? Do you have some factoids you want to just bust out there? Yeah. Do you want to bust all over the place? Yeah, just our- bust yeah. all over. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's my style, totally. Yeah, I, I've got I've got some stuff. Shannon I loves like that. Oh. Me too. <laughs> I'm just you making shit up now. <laughs> Um, All right. Who, who, who goes first? Bruce yeah. Lee thing, real quick. Uh, we were talking about. Um, do you guys remember that scene in Cabin Fever with the little pancake kid that out of nowhere starts doing the, the karate chops and ah, flips yes. in the air? Remember how weird that seemed? <laughs> well, Eli Roth. This is one of his favorite films ever made. So I'm pretty uh, sure that's where the inspiration oh, for that okay. nowhere type of thing came up. Because yeah. I thought about that immediately when I when I saw cabin fever and sure enough it's more in the notes somebody had mentioned eli roth going on record saying this was his favorite slasher film yep. of the eight hands down mm-hmm. but anyways awesome you got any other tidbits you want to bust out um yeah i'm sure his bit isn't tiddly come on I'm, he's probably right, got a big right. bit to bust I'm, out okay I'll, okay <laughs> big bit to bust out bust over all right so <laughs> apparently this came as a uh, last house on the left Part two is what was originally brought to this director, and uh, he did not like the script for it. He didn't think it was very original. He thought it was kind of boring and and lacking in certain areas. Um, so they showed him a 15-page treatment of what would become pieces and um, kind of somewhat gave him creative control to do whatever he wanted to. So he said he was going for something that he could – a, that would be just fun and off the wall because he came from family film. Like his movies prior to this were like PG rated family films in huh. Spain. And so he had never done anything close to this. And then a producer from the original Friday the 13th got involved and it, it just escalated from that point. But he wanted to do something that he thought would be fun and off the wall for him to do and something that was possible with, with such a low budget. And so that's why they decided to go all out on this wacky huh. or film. Yeah. All right. All right. I like it. Um, we have the, I think almost famous bastard. Bastard. <laughs> like four times. Oh, that was great. <laughs> then he gets quiet. Bastard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful acting job. there. Did you guys, Catch the girl, uh, with the chainsaw and the sweatpants, or she urinates on herself. Did oh, you? Yes, yeah. yes. Was yeah. that for real life? That like was real. Did. She was terrified of the chainsaw that got so close to her, and it was just a natural reaction. And so the director decided, well, we'll just we'll just keep that in. So it was a it was a live chainsaw with the chain on it and everything, and it just got a little too close to comfort for her. They must have had a camera. Oh, God, that was that was real then. God. They must have had a, yeah. B, a B camera close up on her crotch to catch that, unless they recreated it because that was a you know right up up close shot. Maybe I, the director might have been like at all times. Uh, B <laughs> camera operator, your job is to just be an extreme close up on crotches. Everyone's Absolutely. crotch. <laughs> yes. You never know what's going to happen. always had a second unit as filming crotches. Yeah. Yes. This was a very crotch focused movie. That's that's for sure. Yes. Oh, yeah. It, it was. Um, yeah, I already talked about Wendy's. It was the. I just. Right when I saw the <laughs> Wendy's cup once again, I'm just saying it again because it's in my notes here. Right when I saw it, I just instantly wanted some Wendy's. And now I'm talking about it and I want some Wendy's. <clears throat> Go. Um, Get your truck burger. Yeah. And all I. I mean. Uh, I oh, thought, I, 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 I thought. After, so I just want this scene to be explained, kind of. Sorry. So after the the pool scene happens, we see the carcass of the girl, and you know, all all mangled up. Willard comes out with his uh, hedge trimmers, and he sees the carcass, and then it's uh, Kendall that we see like running out the door, and then he opens the door, and then two cops start like getting Willard and stuff. And I, I think it's obvious that 
he ran out and told the cops, come in, come in, the killer's in here. Yeah. 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 But I think that's then, what happened. But then Willard isn't questioned at all and stuff, and <laughs> there's still there's no suspects. And like, wait, I thought well, he's the they, one. They arrest him, and then we we hear a couple scenes later, like yeah. we can't hold him on anything, right? Don't we hear I, that I, a couple scenes I later? See. I see. Okay. And it's I, I funny because at one point in the film, he just becomes part of the rest of the gang that's running around crazy around the school yeah. trying to find the killer. He so actually, like, I, I noticed that happen. It's when he walks into the background, you know, when they're all standing yeah. there. And I thought that that was really weird. And so one of the characters was going to say something like, oh, he's here. Maybe it was him. But no one said anything. It was just like he's part of the gang now. Yeah. yeah. yeah there was running a cool around. shot where it's like all the suspects were together yeah. and then lightning strikes. And I'm like, this is like clue all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I do have a note that there was supposed to be a love scene between uh, Kendall and the tennis teacher, but that uh, Linda d- just sort of refused to do it. So they cut it out. Yeah. There was a building because uh, he's goes to her apartment and asked to come in, but then Mary turns uh, down, turn, turns him down. So I thought there was going to be something a little bit later, like yeah. a little, little love scene. God. I'm guessing that's because her husband was on the set. Yeah, probably. Yeah, God damn, we should just set Carmelo loose. He just posted his show notes. He's got like a page and a half. Good. Yeah, we're covering oh, all there you that. Go. I have two and a half pages for this, but I we're covering all of it. We got Holy through it all. Fuck. Well, I'm. Um, well, I'm. That's all I got for my shit. I had um, the few other notes I had are that um, uh, presumably she turned him down because she saw that scene where they filmed him nude and was just so mortified <laughs> by the size of his penis. <laughs> yeah. And the ice that it took, and she was just like, I, I can't. You know, probably her husband who was on set was probably yeah, like, like nope. I'm not letting you anywhere near that. That's not no. going to happen. <laughs> That's um, what it was. He caught, he caught him in the stall earlier. Was, yeah, you're not doing this love scene. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I'm going to shotgun through a few of these, here's my, my notes. I have here that uh, they reuse footage from uh, the director's other film, Supersonic, from, to make it look like it was America. Because um, they filmed this in Madrid and they're trying to pass it off as Boston, but they had stock footage from America. Um, I wrote, you know, I knew the Bruce Lee cameo was coming and it was still weird. Um, <laughs> the reporter for the reporter's death, they used a real knife for that scene. So it was kind of, yeah. kind of freaky for a lot of them. Um, I wrote here that the, uh, the director kept the jigsaw puzzle, uh, the prop. Yeah. And, um, his, uh, blah, blah, blah. And so in Spanish, the title, the title literally translates to a thousand streams has the night. I, I imagine that's like an idiomatic expression. It probably is something more like the night of a thousand screams or something like that. Yeah. yeah. What it would be in English. Um, then I wrote bastard with four exclamation points and it was a four <laughs> week shoot. That's awesome. And then I wrote, I don't understand the ending at all. Uh, the, yeah. the, the, the uh, director actually had a cameo in this. He was one of the photographers at the uh, pool death scene. Um, and he, he's, Obviously, he's just one of, the, one of the one of the one of the guys there. I don't understand the ending at all either, Carmelo. Like, is this body alive now? Is it reanimated? Was there some kind of a? Uh, did he did they get the green reanimator juice inside of it, or did the <laughs> lightning bolt hit it in the closet? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I, yeah, my thought is like there's so there's nothing else in the movie remotely supernatural. So I have no reason to believe the person. Right. right? I think it was that that the dude was traumatized from seeing the corpse the first time. So now they're like, are you sure you're okay? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Of course I still want to be a cop. But now he's like freaked out by the dead body and can't do it. Uh-huh. Um, but I mean, practically it was just because they wanted one final scare. And mm-hmm. that's where my criticism comes in is they had the final scare when the body fell, fell out of the closet. I thought that was that was great. And they should have just stopped it there. I think it was. Well, then we wouldn't have castrations in films. I know. Oh, You're right. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. What I think yeah. it was. It came from pieces. I think it was the. I think it was one of the cops. He was just having a fun time. He was. He was below the camera, uh, puppeting the hand, and uh, just going, oh, "I got your balls. I got your balls." And then it went horribly wrong. Yeah, it's a common game. Cops play is "I got your balls." Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. Bring the ice. <laughs> well, I. I mean, that's my notes on pieces. I like I said. We already did some opening thoughts, but overall, I liked it. I liked the gore. Um, there's some nostalgia there. Could you get away with this stuff today? Not without it being a complete comedy, which maybe someone should do and probably are doing, like just over-the-top practical effects, com- comedic-wise, you know. 
Um, but yeah, it, it, a lot of flack too for for the being misogynistic is what it was called. The director spoke to that. He said, "I he said I guess that's because." The victims were women, he said, but, you know, yeah, see, the, serious, a lot of people killed women. But, of course, the, they were all nude. If that's <laughs> so, if this yeah. is I mean, that's it's just a the, women, it's a nude puzzle that he's putting together. That's they just have. the time. No, this is just the times we got the same thing about New York Ripper when I, and I can understand a little more with New York Ripper because obviously she's getting toe banged by a dirty Puerto Rican but no, I only say that because the guy the of Danny Bowen do not necessarily represent I only the say yeah. that because no, I don't in Puerto Rican I only say that because the guy who actually looked like dirty in it I'm not saying that Puerto Ricans are dirty yeah. <laughs> I should have rephrased that there he was dirty yeah, I so, I'm, I'm not I'm not touching this so I, well, oh, I'm not the one that did the chop suey accent earlier in this episode uh, it's <laughs> Yeah, I did it out of respect. <laughs> so I'm just saying that by not racist if you do the accent. I'm just saying no, by the mean. Right, it's more racist if you don't do the accent. <laughs> I'm just saying that by those standards, every fucking eighty slasher is misogynistic because it's all <laughs> women with their boobs hanging out getting murdered. Yeah. Exactly. That's the point. <laughs> they are all misogynistic. And I enjoy them as much as everyone else on this podcast does. But yeah, <laughs> on the flip side, on the flip side, the horror genre is the only film genre where women have more speaking time than men on screen. That oh, is they're usually actual the heroes. Fact. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, you guys notice? You guys, I no one even talked about the killer's breathing. So, <laughs> so he was breathing when he was getting close, or, or when you when you see the killer, kind of similar to the mutilator breathing. Yeah. I mean, or like when he was about to kill. Or like Rob when he's not talking. Yeah. So that was that was really cool. Yeah, yeah, Rob. <laughs> and we didn't talk about my favorite yeah, kill, the fucking waterbed one kill. Theme song away. Oh yeah. Oh, that was the director's favorite too. Oh, the, the waterbed, waterbed kill. kill was awesome. Yep. Yeah, it was awesome. Yep, yep, yep. What did you say? The theme song? What? I said this film was like one theme song away from being right up there with the mutilator. Oh, I know. Like, you just remind me so much mm -hmm. of one another. You just, just, just no yeah, this was pretty good, but it didn't have the fall break song. No, no, you, break. Know, man. you cannot, you cannot beat the fall break theme song. I don't care what you do. That's the best theme song ever of any horror movie ever. Was I not ever. here for the mutilator? No, you weren't. You weren't, I don't think. Uh, you I was that. I was filling in for that episode back when I was just a guest star and uh, filling in for you. I just That's have right. I just have one thing to say. Going on a, a fall break. I'm so going to cover that song one of these days. Oh, you it. have to, Thad. Whip out the guitar. In the moonlight. You have to learn that. Yeah, I'll just do an acoustic version of it. Be oh, great. for sure. But make That'd it all nice. like slow and emotional. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this had the uh, this had the like uh, dun 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 sounds when when it when so cool. it was yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, pretty cool. All right. Well, my piece, my Blu-ray never came in. Supposedly it's still on the way, so I guess I'll still own it. But I didn't get to watch it all before this episode. Um, that was pieces. Anyone else have anything to say about pieces? Uh, I what? Would, one final note about the girl that was split in half. Her mother was uh, the head of wardrobe for this film, apparently. Mm. And she told the director once they did that gag, she wanted to come to the set and see what it looked like. And she was not prepared for how real that looked. So she went when she went in and saw, you know, this half of her daughter laying in the floor with the blood oh all God. over it. It was so much for that. She fainted and hit the ground <laughs> oh, <laughs> pretty awesome. Wow. They yeah. said, yeah, that's effective, you know, and that was the scene that the director wasn't sure about. He was afraid they were going to be ripping off chainsaw too much and ended up kind of being the most impactful oh, death of goodness. the movie. Oh, I'm that was suppressing yeah. a sensitive Carmelo reference again. Wow. <laughs> she just hit the ground. Actually to, to Thad's point too, I guess something similar happened at the premiere during uh, Scotty's favorite kill when the waterbed scene happened. I guess the uh, the actress who played the reporter like couldn't handle it and walked out of the theater like couldn't handle watching. Oh, oh cool. yeah, because that was that. her getting killed. Yeah. That's right. Yep, yeah, I didn't read that. There um, was a character that real. Had a dick to this movie. Yeah, and there was there was there was a, and there was one thing that I wanted to say. There was the last girl that Kendall was doing it with, um, and she just was screaming out of out of out of out of control. And then she said, "I'll control myself if." It, if if we do it again, that and then you said the gag. Lines of dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> and then, what if you gag me? I I wouldn't make noise then. Yeah. <laughs> so there's some great lines in this. How did this guy get so many chicks? I don't know. 
I will I will leave off with I I was disappointed that there wasn't a love scene between him and the tennis coach. I thought there was totally yeah. was going to be. It was yeah. leading up to it. I thought it was definitely going to happen. Damn match. It was nice to really see him shot. I know. Yep. Christopher whatever his name is, God. Oh man. All it's right. For George. Well, he, yep, that, he died like the same year this movie came out. So, I mean, yeah, I think they would have made it. Well, that wraps up pieces. Uh, let's move on it's to our. It's exactly what it sounds like. Let's move on That's to. That's such our... a great tagline. It is. No, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> For that movie. Let's uh, move on to our final segment. What did you watch? Did you watch? Did it doesn't you work watch? when we're not in the same room. Oh, doesn't, sorry. Doesn't work. Damn it. I always wanted no. to sing that perfect. Five piece harmony. Oh, oh damn it! Oh. <laughs> we could have done that. We we should have worked on that before this episode. Yeah, well, absolutely. We've been practicing the and for so long. We yeah, have, and we finally got that down <laughs> without even talking about it. We didn't talk about it till now. <laughs> damn it! Sorry. Danny's very sensitive about that and the Powerpuff Girls, so I try not to bring up. I, like that. All I'm saying is, don't I give a it. horror podcast <laughs> flack for not being. Uh, familiar with the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't in our research. It didn't pop up in our research. Yeah. All right. All right. Rob, what I like this what? close up. Rob, there's a close up of Rob right now. It looks uh, very like I don't know. It just it looks very cinematic. Like we should uh, scrambling to remember find what I watched. Like he's on every episode. Like he's a part we of should. Unfriended. I can I can go first. I went and saw Gemini Man. Oh, how's that? Oh, God, I so forgot good. that you don't have kids and see movies all the time. Yeah, what's that like? Yeah. <laughs> how was it? Uh, honestly, I just love it. I have so much free time. I don't know what to do with myself. Yeah, I can't so wait for you to have pass. kids and you'll have to live under the same restrictions as the rest of us. And ours will be <laughs> great. No, no. I'll get yep. the kids a movie yeah. pass, too, and they can come. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah, you Gemini think Man that? Was good. Part two, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gemini Man was good. Uh, it, there were a couple things that were a little cheesy, but for the most part, I thought it was really good. I like Will Smith a lot. I thought the action was great. Mary Elizabeth Winstead is great. Clive Owen's an awesome villain. Um, the premise was cool. Spoilers. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Clive Owen. Clive Owen was going to be awesome, dude. Side note. He ruined it. Side note. I didn't even know he was in the movie. Clive I Owen is one of the best actors. Side note. He's really good. <laughs> He's I love so Clive Owen. All right. Does that it, Camaro? That's all you want? There's watched? no Kevin Costner. Oh, God. Don't even compare him to Kevin Costner. <laughs> oh, I guess I watched The Mummy, the old one, the 30s, because um, oh, I bought the Universal Monster set in oh, preparation. Yeah. You're supposed to wait until we cover that. Nice. Yeah, well, now I can watch it with commentary. So, oh, you know. okay. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Thad, you watch, what, you watch anything yeah. good this week? Man, I've watched so much. I, every Halloween I do... 31 days of horror i try to try to watch awesome. one every night at least so i've watched a lot recently but most recently i watched uh, uh midsommar i watched that again uh, i haven't awesome seen it yet movie you guys should really check that out what are your thoughts on that uh, it's fucked up but i loved it i mean it, it I if it. any if anything else man it just watch it for the way it looks and the way it plays out it's beautifully shot i mean all it's, right it's not as dark as Hereditary, but it's pretty. It's pretty up there. It's not a happy film, but it. I love it. All right. I can't. And then I, I watch, can't watch it. I'm on boycott. Yeah, just stop. I'll watch. <laughs> Boycotting it. Ari Aster. He's going to do musicals now. He says so. Oh, all right. Ooh. Ooh. That'll, that'll yeah. fit right in with my boycott. There you go. You watch producers, uh, Rob. I love Matthew Broderick. <laughs> <laughs> what else did you watch, Thad? <laughs> I watched uh, Three from Hell last night. Oh, no, I haven't I seen that either. At least saw that. Yeah. It was pretty good. It just came uh, out. Yeah. Hate That's... on it, Thad. Say it was terrible. Just say it. <laughs> you said Devil's Rejects was better. No way. Yeah, Devil's Rejects was better. Yeah, yeah. definitely, uh, in my okay. opinion. I, I thought House of a Thousand Corpses was better as well. Um, oh. It was okay. So it's it seemed the like... worst Rob Zombie movie ever made. No, it's <laughs> not the worst. <laughs> but it was kind of a re retread, I think, on... On Devil's Rejects, maybe a little too much, and I, I thought the ending of Devil's Rejects was so brilliant that when they announced a sequel, I thought, ah, I wonder if that's going to sour the ending, and, and it, it kind of did a little bit, but it was mm -hmm. cool, shot well. Um, he obviously drew a lot of inspiration from like the Manson trials and yeah, the natural born kill. You know, we're making serial killers popular and that type of stuff, but yeah. it, it was not bad. It was not all bad. right, all right, uh, Scotty. 
Um, yeah, I I watched. Well, I watched the Adams Family uh, with 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 my wife. It's kind of it's comedy, but there's spookiness in it. The, the um, new one, and the original. Oh, and I do um, love the Adams Family. And then I watched Truth or Dare. Uh, finally, the right uh, one. Watched it last week. <laughs> it was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I, my wife got freaked out. I, I was uh, kept asking her truth or dare with those uh, demoning eyes, and she got all freaked out and uh, said she hated me. She wouldn't let so. him watch. She wouldn't watch uh, taking a Deborah Logan with him. Yeah, I wanted to scary. watch taking a taking a Deborah That's Logan. So good, love it. For, for such a good movie. Dead. Scotty still hasn't seen it. I need to watch it. Uh, I will watch Pieces with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She she actually caught the tail end of Pieces. Um, and saw some, she had to turn away a few times like, Oh my God, what is this? Yeah. But, uh, she thought truth or dare, I, truth or dare is pretty good. Um, definitely, uh, you, you know, it's uh, some typical stuff that I've seen a lot, but there was some good twist to it. Uh, Rob, let's but, yeah, hear I'm it. definitely going to see Deborah Logan this week. Awesome. Rob, what you got? Rob. Why, why don't you go, Danny? Because I'm still trying to figure oh out how I look at my viewing. He doesn't even. Him. He's so old, he can't remember what he watched in the last five days. <laughs> what did you no, watch, Danny? I can't remember what I. Well, Danny, Danny watched uh, the snow movie. What? Was with Stella? I'm sure. Oh well, I, well, yeah, that's just a given. Frozen's been playing nonstop in my it's house so for the last three uh, weeks. Danny, <laughs> I haven't seen Frozen yet. I, is it too gory for me? Can I still I, watch it? You know what, Carmelo? <laughs> you might be a little watch too sensitive. Adam Green's Frozen. Watch yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That one's actually pretty good. I, I, I literally can't believe. Uh, just a side note. That movie came out, you know, a good two, three years before the Disney Frozen, and I just cannot believe Disney made a movie called Frozen, and even though there was one made already that wasn't that like not that unpopular. It just blows my mind, right? Right. You know. So, anyways, um, I watched You Were Never Really Here because Rob sort of recommended it in passing. Didn't you, Rob, with Joaquin Phoenix, where he's the yes, 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 yeah, I liked it. That one. yeah, it was pretty good. It was, it wasn't bad. It, it, it's artsy, but it's got some I, man. That hammer, <sighs> that hammer's brutal. It is, oh. but it's not at the same time. They held back from showing anything, yeah. and that's what really. And it's and it's, and it's fat Joaquin Phoenix. It's happy. It's fat. fat Joaquin. It's fat, but he's also like burly yeah, he too. He's burly too, but he's also oh, a beard, really good actor. Oh my. God, oh, I, I actually want to see Joker just because he's... Yeah, I want to see Joker. I really do, but I do want to say... I want to see that too. I can't get to the film. Yeah, I do want to say, though, that it, I was disappointed because it didn't show... It would have been way more better and brutal, I think, if they sh- showed everything with the hammer, uh, which they didn't. Um, and, and, I, and it was because of budget issues I read on IMDb, but uh, they saved it all for him, his fake... Uh, suicide thing at the end which i sort of give some of it away but not much it's just it's God a fake out it. <laughs> it's really good it's, it's it, it, it was shot really well i mean like, it was shot yeah uhd it was one of the first like amazon prime 4k movies that so, came out with. so it wasn't bad uh i've been watching um i love it i've been watching marianne on netflix oh is that good yeah it's yeah, I, creepy. I already finished it it's really good didn't you think it was creepy rob i loved it's it fucking creepy Bruce dude rec- Patrick Rupa convinced me to do it. I don't know how you have to watch it because it's in French. Um, but the default way that it plays for you is is dubbed English. Uh, but I don't like watching that way because it sounds like you don't get the acting really from the actors. No, you know? no. And so I had to, I had to put the, the yeah. Subtitles. So I turn it back to I turn it back to French and then I just turn the English subtitles on and I like it better that way and it's. Man, uh, it's got some creepy visuals in it. It's they, it's a really well done for sure. Yeah, the, so. the bu- I wonder what the budget Did was. Some out. of the stuff is way well done for a Netflix. Yeah, TV. I don't usually watch series or mini series at all because I just like to watch movies. But I was, I I caught the preview for it and the preview like creeped me out. I was like, ooh, I gotta watch this. I'll check it out. So, it's been yeah. pretty good. Marianne I recommended that to me. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So, anyways, uh, Rob, now now you have to go. I watched uh, Tusk again. Oh, yeah. good, just, good watch. It, good it watch. holds up. It's so good. A little uh, Haley um, Joel Osmond there. Joel and Hole? <laughs> fat Haley Joel. <laughs> yes, fat and happy Haley Joel Osmond. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I watched uh, I watched the uh, uh, taking of uh, Deborah Logan. Oh, you did? Excellent. Yeah. What do you think? It was it was really good. It's scary, <laughs> huh? That was really good. No, yeah. I thought it was. Re- I watched it at night. <laughs> lights off and it, it had a couple of really get you get you mm. scenes yeah. I, I i enjoyed it and then 
I think like really the only non horror thing that I had time to watch is I I I watched uh, Sin City. Uh, it was on Netflix. Yeah, classic. Yeah. All right, nice. cool guys. Nice. Well, uh, that pretty much wraps us up. Uh, Thad, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate yeah, it. man. Lifesaver. Lifesaver on the pieces Thad. facts there. Thanks for having all the facts and stuff uh, for for pieces. That was, yeah. that was great. And uh, feel free to – I know you got a couple things going on musically and podcastily. You could plug whatever you want, <laughs> Thad. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, uh, my band, Severmind, if you guys like uh, – kind of melodic metal type of stuff please check yeah. us out um we just uh, signed on to do a show with death angel in tulsa in december so we're kind of gearing up for that plus i i joined this band a little over a year ago and so we've just been writing new material and getting ready to go in and do a, a, a full-length album finally so that's kind of our plans to a few shows here and there we got some pretty cool news yesterday that we can't share, but um, all right, we'll be looking for that soon. <laughs> Ooh, and then yeah, nice. and then uh, me and a couple of the uh, fellow elites, Lance Dale, David Martin, we are uh, going to be doing a podcast called the Primetime uh, Horror Show, which is just basically sitting around talking about shit that we love, you know, anything from horror movies to music and and that type of stuff, just for nice. for a good time. So yeah, looking forward to that again. Um, we're in the group pretty active all of us in the group so uh we'll be talking about that feel free to reach out on facebook if you want to know information about either project cool cool Appreciate well, yeah, you um awesome guys awesome. well uh yeah get ready for terminator next week uh just get on our patreon and sign up and then leave us a voicemail you know about uh uh michael bean's awesome bulge or uh Ian. it's Ian. not Ian. that's got freddy all over it. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. oh yeah so, uh, yeah, I'm a yeah. little nervous about the power he has with that. We'll have to just dub, <laughs> dub it down. It, it won't matter yeah. because we won't hear yeah, anything. I a lot of those. No. <laughs> it won't matter because there'll just be a ton of background noise. And, you and know. now a voicemail from Freddy Torres. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving you shit, Freddy. Just giving you shit. We'll have you back on again. Don't worry, man. We'll just we'll just test the audio first. <laughs> um, and also. Oh, oh any updates on the cool. IMDB stuff? Um, for, I, want, I want my Oh, oh yeah, friend. yeah. Uh, I actually, I think I have did them already, so you should. Did you? Uh, yeah, you I, should. I. you know what I did? You know what has to happen trying to be? I submitted all of them about three weeks ago, and oh, then, um, so those of you guys that are listening that, that pledge to She Walks the Woods, uh, this will be a good time just to update in general. If you pledge to She Walks the Woods, um, we're actually hoping to have it on Amazon Prime on Halloween, like in a, nice. in a week and a half here. Uh, but we may not make that deadline. We're, we're frantically trying to get everything over to the distributor right as we speak. Uh, the, the Blu-ray author guy authoring the Blu-ray, and I don't know if he's going to have it done in time. If he can overnight it to me, then we can overnight it to the distributor and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, uh, so yeah, that's, that's coming. So if it's not Halloween, it'll just be a little bit after Halloween that you'll see it appear on digital. And you'll know about it because we'll be pushing the hell out of it once it appears there. Um, awesome. but then those of you that got Blu-rays, uh, unfortunately the distributor says they take about three months for the whole process to happen. So once they get everything in their hands in about a week here, they'll start that process, I'm assuming, and probably get the Blu-rays out to us and we'll ship them out around the first of the year. So apologize for the delay on that. Yeah. Um, other though, otherwise though, I'll probably be getting the shirts shipped out in the next couple weeks here, next week or so. Um, so you get the She Walks the Wood shirts. And then um, we're, we're trying to decide to shave, save on shipping costs. Uh, we could go ahead and send out the other goods, like the posters and the signed scripts, um, before the Blu-rays if we want, just to get them to you faster. Uh, of course, that'll be another shipping cost, though. We may just wait till the Blu-rays are ready, ship everything all at once. Um, well, the only reason we're doing the shirts di separately is because I actually have them sent by our print-on-demand supplier that does our stuff for the horror store, so it has to ship separate anyways, uh, no matter when we do it, so I don't mind shipping those right away, but uh, we may wait to just send out full-on boxes, packages, um, with everything included in them to everybody, yeah. like around the first of the year, so... Box set. We'll be updating via Kickstarter nice. as well, so keep your eye on the email. Uh, but yeah, so, but about the IMDb, Thad, I submitted it all, and then IMDb has to, like, approve everything, And but usually they do it pretty fast. I would be surprised if it's not active already. Like, if you just go to IMDb right now, 
and type in, I'm doing it on my phone, Thad Timothy. Because you don't have any other credits on there, right? No, not oh, yet. But it would be Thad. <laughs> Wasn't it like Thaddeus or something? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Is it? Oh, holy shit. There it is. Yep. Okay. Hey. It's on there. Nice. So she walks the wood. Uh, there it is. Maybe it just popped she up. walks the wood. So what you can, what you yeah. guys can do, if this is your first one, Thad, and the, and if anyone else, if it's your first one, uh, they get you. You can, you can pay for uh, IMDb Pro, which is like, I think it's a yearly thing. It's like ninety bucks a year or something, and then you can upload as much of your own information as you want, like your own profile photo and your own bio, and as many photos and, as you want, and as many photos as you want, and it'll all just be there. And you can, if you have like a demo reel or whatever that kind of thing. Um, I mm-hmm. think it, you may be Rob. I don't know if you explored this avenue. You may be able to upload a photo without being a member of IMDb Pro as like a contributor, and then as long as IMDb approves that, they'll put it there i don't know if you tried that rob or not i but. think i think you can it's okay. been a while i pay for the pro so i i, I don't yeah. remember so you might I be think, able to do I that think, i think without the pro you get a picture yeah but, you then get like, water. Mm-hmm. but then you have to have a bio your bio and everything else is extra okay I, yeah there may be a way yeah, more where than you, one picture all that kind of stuff is extra. maybe before you pay just go there uh and, and on any IMDb, you may have noticed you can contribute like to any post. Like you contribute to pieces. Like oh, I know this fact about pieces, and you could click on the contribute, and then you can input, you follow the steps, input the information, and then if they approve it, they'll it'll show up there. And so you might want to try that first. Like hey, I know Thad Timothy. Like you know, hey, I, here's a here's a picture of Thad Timothy. Like to contribute to his profile, and then if they're like oh cool yeah that's fine, then it might just show up. So uh, yeah, awesome. So. Awesome, guys. Cool, well, uh, sorry to extend this episode, but yeah. yes, uh, follow us. At, yeah, yeah, right. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> like, no, you're fine, Like man. 15 minutes of post show. I know, right, man? All right, follow us at Danny Good. Bonin, at Scotty that? Bonin, yeah. at Chimera's Comics, at O'Neillio with four O's, uh, also at Cold Classic Horror and everything, at CC Horror on Twitter. Uh, look for Thad Timothy and his band Severmind, and um, also his podcast coming up, uh, Primetime Horror, right? Yes. Okay. Primetime horror. All right. Check that out. Search it in your podcast apps coming up soon here. Um, awesome. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks again, Thad. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And we'll catch you guys. Great having you on. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. A lot oh, of yeah, fun. Man. Thanks, Thad. We'll catch you guys next week. Later, guys. Later. Later. Bye. Don't you blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. <laughs> Oh yes, there will be blood.